When I started writing Savage Love, uh, one of the things that set the column apart was I wrote about sex using the language that people actually used when they talked about sex with their friends. Um, and I think there's been a, a big change in the last 25 years. And Savage Love in the United States was one of the things that helped drive that change, where people got more and more honest about what they actually wanted, what they actually were doing. Um, and you saw more open conversations about differences among straight people. And I think that's something that really jumped from gay culture to straight culture, because there's much less of an obsession in gay culture with what's normal, because you're already not normal, so why obsess about normality? What people realize and need to realize when it comes to human sexuality is variance is the norm, that abnormality is what's normal, that normal sex, um, missionary position, man on top, uh, within the bounds of matrimony, in a dark room, in the middle of the night, when the kids are asleep. That's what people think of when they think normal sex. But that's actually not the majority of the sex that human beings are having on any given Friday night or Saturday night. So that is actually abnormal sex. Savage Love started 25 years ago and it was originally a joke. I met someone who was opening a newspaper, starting a newspaper in Seattle called The Stranger, and I said to him, oh, you should have an advice column because everybody reads those. And I wasn't trying to write the column myself, but he said, that's excellent advice, why don't you write the advice column? Because I was a gay guy, and we just were gonna write a sex advice column for straight people by a gay guy, writing about straight sex and straight relationships. And the idea originally was I would treat straight readers with the same contempt that heterosexual advice columnists had always treated gay readers with. So it was just a joke when it started. I was just like, ew, straight people, straight sex, it's so gross, it's so awful, why would you do that? Here's some advice. Um, but the column was a big hit and straight people loved it and perhaps because they'd never been treated this way, treated with this kind of contempt and it seemed novel and amusing. And then real questions started to pour in. And it kind of went from, in about six months, being a joke advice column, almost a parody of an advice column, to being an actual advice column. People have an easier time sometimes asking me the question because it's an anonymous forum. And sometimes it's just easier to, at least that first time, tell the truth to a stranger that you may never have see again because people are afraid of being judged and uh, people are afraid of being shamed. And at least my readers know that I'm not gonna judge or shame them about their desires, maybe about their activities, maybe about their choices, maybe about their uh, decisions, but not about their desires. Um, and that frees people up. And that anonymity is so important. I'm never really shocked by the email by the when it comes to sex, I'm never shocked by the things people do. What I'm constantly shocked by, and I am shocked almost every day, uh, is by stu people's stupidity um, and their ability to delude themselves about what they think they can get away with. Um, that shocks me. The way people treat each other, um, the way people treat their partners with contempt, um, the ways people put up with lousy relationships that are past their expiration date in every way. Um, I'm shocked by that. Not shocked by desire, not shocked by sex acts. Shocked by what people will put up with and what people will do to one another uh, emotionally, not sexually. What I've learned answering questions for so long uh, is that people will not see what is obvious to everyone else. Usually that's around a terrible relationship. People will be, stay in terrible relationships that they need to get out of. Uh, because I don't know why. It's obvious to me, it's obvious to their friends. Here's what the relationship is like, and it's just they describe this horrible relationship, and then they ask me what I think they should do. You should break up with this person. I agree with your family and your friends and everyone that you know that you should probably dump this person. Um, and that I'm constantly amazed by. <laughs> I once answered a letter, and I think I told someone to break up, got a letter and said you should break up with this person. So three months later, a few months later, I accidentally was searching the email and saw this letter and answered it again and gave the opposite advice. So the letter was in the column twice, 
And one time I said, oh, you should break up. And the other time I said, here's how you save this relationship. Here's what you should do. Uh, which just goes to show that you shouldn't put necessarily too much stock in the advice that I give. Because uh, sometimes it's entirely based on the moment and the mood that I'm in. When it comes to relationships, I think the best advice I give to people is to be GGG, which is good giving in game, which is good in bed, um, have some skills, uh, giving some, you know, to try to meet your partner's needs, give pleasure, sometimes without an expectation of an immediate return, and game, sort of up for anything sexually, uh, within reason. You know, don't do things that traumatize you, but try to meet your partner's needs and have sexual adventures together and step outside your comfort zone and go places sexually. Um, if people are GGG, it can really keep the sexual connection going and keep the sexual connection alive. Uh, and I think that's advice everyone should take. And it's worked for me.